Hello and welcome to this video. So we've got one last thing to do then. We've got to sort out inside the processing of our buys and sells this return 00, zero here. To do this we're going to write a new function just above process buy and I'm going to call this def end hit calc taking a direction, a stop loss, a price and a start price. So this function then is going to give us a fraction between minus one and plus 2.0. So I'm just going to make some room to comment here just to write something. You don't need to do this yourselves, but I just want to explain how this is going to work. Let's imagine we have a stop loss at a price of 100 and we started the trade at 200. Now let's imagine that the current price is 150. So we'll have a stop loss 100 and the entry at 200 and the current price 150. The way we'll calculate our fraction here is we know that at the stop loss when we hit that we get a result of minus 1.0. So we know that when we've moved minus 100 in price that delta is equal to 1.0 in terms of result minus 100. So if we look at where we actually are with the current price here of 150 we've actually moved minus 50. So if we divide the minus 50 by the full delta that we expect to hit the stop loss, then we end up with a result of 0.5. Now in the end that result will be a minus 0.5 of course because we're losing not winning on this particular trade. But we can use the comparison between our current delta and the starting price and the stop loss delta and the starting price to calculate the fraction that we are between 0 and minus 1 if we're losing. The good news is because the delta for the stop loss between the prices are minus 1.0 in the way our trade is working because we're doing a 2 to 1 risk to reward, we can use that delta to calculate the positive side as well. So in this example here the take profit would have been 400. So if our price was at 300 let's say we would be halfway to the 400. We would have a delta of plus 100 divided by this 100 is 1.0. So we would have a 1.0 which is correct because 2.0 is what we win when we hit the take profit. So the good news is the math behind this is fairly simple. So we're going to say our delta is equal to the price minus the start price. So that's our delta. Now we'll get the full delta. So the full delta is equal to the start price minus the stop loss. So now what we need to do is calculate our fraction. And that's simply fraction is equal to the absolute of our delta divided by the full delta. So now we've got some pretty boring stuff to type because it's repetitive, but I want to make it very clear rather than wrapping it all into something complex. We'll say that if the direction is one and the price is greater than or equal to the start price, return fraction. So this says if we're a buy and our current price is bigger than the start price then we must be winning and we're winning by fraction. Otherwise if the direction is buy and the price is less than the start price then return minus fraction because in that case we have a buy but we're actually below our start price so we're losing. Otherwise we can copy and paste this down here and say if the direction is minus one and the price is less than or equal to the start price because it's a sell so we want to be below we're winning otherwise if the direction is minus one and the price is greater than the start price then we're losing and here we can make this an L if as well. And the last thing we'll do here is this should never show up but if we haven't returned anything then we'll just print error here. So that's how it hit end calc function written. Now what we need to do is we need to get this incorporated into the trade processing. So in our process by where we're returning zero zero this is where we want to return uh, whatever the result is. So we're going to return end hit calc one stop loss price and start price. And likewise for the sell we can do exactly the same thing except now we've got minus one. And that should be all we need then to calculate the fractions as well. So one more thing just to test how this is working. I'm going to say if index is not equal to five continue because I know that the trade at the index of five I think is one where we hit the end without having hit the stop loss or take profit. And I just want to make sure that the calculation is looking okay. So you don't need to do this but I'm just going to paste a line of code into the hit end calc here just so that we can see what the fraction is and we can see where we're coming in. And then that particular trade is a sell. So here I'm just going to adjust the code and say that uh, fraction is equal to and then this end calc here and return the fraction. But I just want to print off the fraction as well. So just running that then to have a quick look I can see that uh, it's a sell and the starting price was 112.32. We're actually at 0.36 so we're losing at the moment. We can see that the full delta here is 0.16 because the stop loss was 112.49 so that's yep that looks okay and we can see that our delta is 0 0.034 which it is which makes that yeah approximately a fifth of the delta to the stop loss and then that becomes negative obviously because we're losing so the fraction looks all right. 
I'm just going to go back up and remove this print line here because we don't need it. Remove this uh, print fraction here. We can leave the returning fraction as it is for now. Take out this index is not equal to 5. And now we can run the full simulation. And we get a result of 91. So if I go back to the original 4-hour simulation, which was corrected, we can see we had 196. So we were indeed very positively slanted. And now we've got a much more accurate simulation that says we're actually still, in terms of this currency over the time period, doing quite well. Now you could go down to 1 minute accuracy or 30 second or 5 second candle accuracy if you wanted. I'm not going to because the point was to show you how you may go around doing this. There are lots of different ways to do this. But we seem to have quite a positive result. Now one of the things that's not factored into this is the spread. And this can have quite a significant effect on the results of the simulation. I know from past experience. I generally have no idea where this one is going or what it's going to do. But in the next video we're going to start the process of introducing the spread into this code. But for now, we've come really far. You should pat yourself on the back again. I apologize about the errors, but we've so far confirmed what RoboPip was saying, at least for this currency pair, that recently it does indeed seem that there's some advantage. Of course, we're not plotting the cumulative gains or anything like that yet. We'll do that once we have the spread included into the simulation. So thanks very much for watching. Comments, questions, welcome as always, and see you in the next one.